Our troops have lost brothers, they have lost arms and legs, wives have lost husbands and vice versa, kids have been orphans, lives have been forever altered. The whole world has changed because of this dirt bag, and yet they still wash his body and care for it and wrap it. I'd give my right arm to have a can of Spam at that point, but they didn't. No other country in the world, in fact in the history of the world, has ever done anything like that. Will it matter? No. No, it won't. But we didn't change. You know, every time I think that, oh, I don't know if we could do the cookies or the or the confetti or whatever I see the it's not marching in the streets for innocent victims it is celebrating in the streets for a journey that has been long and hard and been fought valiantly with honor and people have tried to do the right thing and this guy was certainly not innocent let's not forget who this man was he was the mastermind behind 9-11 3,000 innocent people, innocent, dead. But that's not all. The 1993 World Trade Center bombing, the 1996 bombing of the Kobar Towers, the 98 U.S. Embassy bomb bombings in Kenya, 219 were killed there. Dar es Salaam, 5,000 injured. In 2000, the USS Cole in Yemen, the attacks again of September 11th, the U.S. consulate in Pakistan. In 2002, do you remember the Bali nightclub bombings? In 2002, he went to Kenya again and bombed some more. I know I cannot speak for these people, so this is unofficial. But this is for everyone involved in this operation. All of those men and women who have been wearing the uniform or those that we don't ever know their names or don't know their faces who have worked tirelessly in the years leading up to last night. Despite all odds, despite the politicians on both sides and both parties handcuffing you, may I just say, thank you. Daniel Pearl, if he could speak, would say, thank you. Pat Tillman, thank you. Todd Beamer and the other victims of United Flight 93, thank you. Barbara Olson, thanks you. Intelligence agent Johnny Michael Spann, thanks you. Michael P. Murphy and Max Axelton. Matt Axelton of SEAL Team 10, thanks you. The 17 USS Cole servicemen, including Petty Officer 2nd Class Timothy Lamont Saunders, thanks you. The 3,000 people who died on September 11th, the 3,000 people, thank you. The people who finally woke up from our slumber and realized how close we really were to losing our freedom, thank you. My family thanks you, and I thank you. That was the crowd last night at the Phillies Mets game. Uh, boy, I mean, the place, the place not to be last night if you were an Al Qaeda member would be New York, Philadelphia. News spread on Facebook and spread fast about uh, Bin Laden's death. People didn't need TV at all. Once again, the mainstream media was beat to the punch by its replacement, the internet. Even though he had no idea what was happening. This man scooped the world. A Pakistani man live blogged the raid on Osama bin Laden's compound in suburban Pakistan on Twitter. Sohab uh, Attar was up late when he suddenly heard a loud sound of helicopters in the area and he began 
tweeting back and forth on what was going on. He describes himself as a uh, IT consultant taking a break from the rat race by hiding in the mountains. Little did he know the rat race was coming to him, hiding in the same place Osama bin Laden did. Here is his first tweet. I'm going to put it up here. Here's his first tweet. I love this. Helicopter hovering above at 1 a.m. This is a rare event. A few minutes later, it's obvious this rare event uh, is happening uh, for a long period of time, and he's annoyed. He writes, go away, helicopter, before I take out my giant swatter. Yeah, I don't think that one would work on this helicopter. But it didn't go away, and it only got more intense. Quote, a huge window shaking bang here. I hope it's not the start of something nasty. Oh, mm -hmm. just the end of something nasty. That was the point when the SEAL team blew up the malfunctioning helicopter. A short time later, the news broke that President Obama was speaking, and immediately he retweeted people connecting the two events together. I think the helicopter crash in Pakistan and President Obama breaking news are connected. Anyone following this guy had instant, real-time information that no one else in the world had. Once again, he learned that Osama bin Laden was his neighbor. And then he tweeted, funny, moving to Autobad was a part of the being safe strategy. And now this morning he was tweeting about being bombarded with media requests, so many that he can't even keep up with them. I was in the, um, I was in the Oval Office under George W. Bush. I had said some nasty things about him uh, on CNN. Yeah, believe it or not. Except that president invited me to the Oval Office to chat. It was the day that the candidate, Barack Obama, said that he would fly jets into Pakistan if he had to in order to get bin Laden. Here's what he said. If we have actionable intelligence about high-value terrorist targets and President Musharraf will not act, we will. I remember hearing that and thinking, that's crazy talk. On a, si on a side note, in that same speech, candidate Obama said this. The threat is real. They distort Islam. They kill man, woman, and child, Christian and Hindu, Jew and Muslim. They seek to create a repressive caliphate. What's that word? What a conspiracy theory this guy was on. Anyway, I remember going into the Oval Office on that day, and that is one thing I wanted to bring up. I remember thinking flying jets, our jets, across a border into Pakistan without their permission is crazy. And then... The President of the United States told me something that I thought was even crazier. In fact, one of the spookiest things, this really kind of was a turning point for me. I'm like, uh-oh, this isn't good. He said, don't worry. Whoever sits in this desk has very few options. He will know that his hands are tied. Having said that, he said, if I knew where bin Laden was, I'd get him. In the end, Obama didn't use jets. It was the assets on the ground and a few helicopters. You have to give President Obama credit. He made the call. Although, I don't think, hey, yeah, let's kill Obama is all that tough, or I mean, uh, uh, Bin Laden is all that tough of a call, but I'm not the one in that seat, you know? He did seem a little arrogant in last night's speech. I give more credit to the troops who have been on the ground looking for 10 years but he did create the condition to allow Osama bin Laden to be killed. And he deserves respect for that and our thanks. The question is now, what happens? Are we done in Afghanistan? Was this the objective the whole time? Isn't this the perfect excuse to get our troops out of Afghanistan? President Obama said that we were going to get out of these places. Well, now do we have the excuse? And what does the world look like if we do? Here's what the Muslim Brotherhood is saying today. With bin Laden's death, one of the reasons for which violence has been practiced in the world has been removed. It's time for Obama to pull out of Afghanistan and Iraq and end the occupation of U.S. and Western forces around the world that has for so long harmed Muslim countries. Well, what's next? It's a great day today 
but something tells me that this doesn't necessarily mean things are going to get better or at least easier. We'll look at that next.